What is going on, everyone? This is Eric coming at you from just outside of Hartford, Connecticut, with week three of our MLB recap. Now, of course, we've had just about two and a half weeks of baseball, but we did one after the opening series for the heck of it. So these are the updated standings as of today, August 10th, 2020. So as you can see, I did use green and black this time, and I also put the west before. Normally I go east, central, west. Today I went west, central, east. Sometimes it's fun to change it up, you know? So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to jump into the video. So as you can see, we're going to start off with the AL West. And the AL West is headlined by Oakland right now, who is 12 and 4. Texas is sitting at second at 6 and 8. Houston, 6 and 9. Seattle, 6 and 11. And the LA Angels are at 5 and 11. So... Yes, I know teams have played different numbers of games. You know, Oakland's played 16, whereas Texas has played 14. So Seattle's there at 17. So um, surprising things about this division at this point. You know, now I'm going to start making some conclusions for the season. Of course, it's still too early to say this team's a bust or whatever. But, uh, you know, Oakland sitting at 12-4 and four in first place is a little surprising. But they are always underrated, especially here in the East Coast. You know, we don't really talk about the Oakland Athletics unless you're talking about Moneyball. So Oakland's sitting at 12-4. and four, That's good. Their pitching staff's been decent this year. Uh, their offense has been clicking. They're one of the hottest teams in baseball right now, of course, as of this recording. Texas sitting in second. That's a little surprising, but their record isn't. Houston, you know, Seattle again being close to last place. That's not surprising. But Houston and L.A., now, those are the surprising things to me. So, of course, we know the Astros. We knew they were going to have some problems, but they started off the season pretty dang good. Recently, though, they've had some problems, and they just got swept by Oakland, and we actually saw our first bench-clearing incident of the season last night, August 9th, when uh, Loriano, who had been hit two times prior in the series against the Astros, ends up getting hit again, the second time by this pitcher, his name's Castellanos, uh, not Nick Castellanos, of course, another guy, and he gets he takes exception to it, so he charges the mound, he doesn't charge the mound, sorry, he walks to first base, and the Astros hitting coach tries to get him to charge him, so he does, the hitting coach takes a step, but the players come out, they protect their coach, because who's going to win a fight, a 50-year-old or a 27-year-old, you know, in the prime of his career, of course a 27-year-old, so... We get this nice bench clearing incident. Um, there's there were a couple of ejections. There's going to be suspensions because Major League Baseball literally said, "Don't have any bench clearing incidents this season." And we already had one. We saw a massive pile on. All of these guys are involved, and it's just like, okay, guys, listen. If any person had Corona, everyone's gonna have it now. So you might see two teams shut down. Hopefully that doesn't happen. That's absolute worst case. But it's still very concerning to see that. Um, you're going to see suspensions. You're going to see fines. So, again, that's enough with the AL West. Uh, NL West, Colorado's in first at 11-4. Dodgers are in second at 11-5. San Diego, 9-7. San Francisco, 7-10. Arizona, 6-10. Colorado's still playing over their heads right now. You know, their pitching staff is doing very good right now. It's not going to last. They're going to get that Coors effect soon. Always happens. You know, the pitchers always start off hot or cold. And then, like, Colorado pitchers are always streaky. You could have a pitching staff of Clayton Kershaw, Max Scherzer, you know, Madison Bumgarner, some of the most reliable guys. And they're still going to be streaky because that's just how Arizona, or sorry, how Colorado is. Um, Dodgers, you know, 11-5, and five, they've been very good. They're finally starting to click with all of their guys starting to hit homers. So the Dodgers terrify me still. Um, that team should be terrifying to every single person on paper, excluding the Yankees and the Twins are the two teams that could really keep pace with them on offense. The pitching staff's been a little underwhelming, excluding Kershaw. Bueller's been okay, but we'll see. Um, San Diego, the main reason they're 9-7 and seven is because Fernando Tatis Jr. is just slaughtering the baseball. He's tied for the league lead in home runs with eight, tied with Aaron Judge of the Yankees. So, yeah, um, you got a bright future, San Diego. That's for damn sure. And what's crazy is Tatis, 
was a trade piece. They acquired him via trade. So, uh, San Francisco, not surprising. Arizona, not surprising. Uh, bad news for Arizona. Madison Bumgarner left his most recent start on Sunday with back spasms about two innings in. So, they don't know how long he's going to be out for. But you just gave him a big contract this offseason for four years. Uh, Arizona, you're in trouble. That's all I'm going to say. You need to stop doing this perpetual trying to compete when you can't compete garbage. Arizona needs to grow up and say, okay, we need to tank. Uh, we're going to go to the AL Central now. And in first place, we have the Minnesota Twins at 10-6. and six. Detroit Tigers are in second at 8-5. and five. Cleveland's in third at 10-7. and seven. Chicago AL, of course, is 8-8. Eight and eight. And Kansas City, 7-10. and 10. So, quick side note here. The Twins just got swept by the Royals. So, that really made this division that much closer. So, Detroit and Cleveland are both a half a game behind the Twins, respectively. So, yeah. Um, Kansas City playing a little bit of a spoiler there. Whit Merrifield's been doing very good for that team. He's doing pretty much everything he can. Um, other than that, Kansas City's just kind of... They're producing. They they were definitely better than three and ten when they were three and ten, but you know they still have some problems. Minnesota teams are starting to take advantage of their swing happy form, and of course Josh Donaldson just got put in the DL with oblique problems, so that hurts them. You know, Twins don't really give out big contracts in free agency. They gave one to Donaldson. A little concerning since he's on the other side of thirty and he's a power hitter and it's oblique injury. Um, Cleveland. Chicago, they had a late game last night. That's why my handwriting is a little messy. You can see Detroit, Cleveland, Chicago is a little messy. Um, so that was an interesting game. It starts pouring rain in the 10th inning, goes into extras. It starts really pouring in, in the bottom of the 10th, and you can't call a game in the bottom of the 10th inning. So they end up going out. I ended up falling asleep before they ended the game. But, uh, you know, it's just kind of crazy to me. Shane Bieber... You know, his first non-decision of the season. I'm always going to mention Bieber in these videos. Don't you worry. Uh, other than that, though, you know, th th Cleveland's looking good. Not great. Detroit is really a surprise right now sitting at 8-5. and five. But you have to remember, they've really played Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. Those are two teams that you can beat up on if you know how to play them. And I think they're 5-1 and one or 6-2 and two against those teams. 6-3 and three maybe. So it's not all that surprising that they're sitting at eight and five and the white Sox, that offense young talented i'm scared if i'm in the al central for the future but that pitching staff let's just say you better hope kopech comes back next year really healthy and 100 percent and the ace that he has talent to be um going to the nl central of course we see the cubbies are in first place at 10 and 3 and then you get a lot of hot garbage with milwaukee six and seven cincinnati seven and nine st louis two and three pittsburgh three and thirteen I'm going to get St. Louis out of the way first. Hadn't played this week due to coronavirus. You know, the whole team, some players are infected. Uh, the big names are going to be like Paul DeYoung. I think DeYoung's like the biggest name. And Yadier Molina, of course, future Hall of Famer. Other than that, you know, Goldschmidt's healthy. Um, they have Matt Carpenter's healthy. So they have some good players still there, but they don't know when they're going to jump back. They might play tomorrow. We don't know yet. Um, Milwaukee, Christian Yelich is finally snapping out of that slump he had where he started the season with a, what was it, 079 average, which is not good if you're, you know, an NL MVP candidate, supposed to be. So Milwaukee's finally getting its act together, but the pitching staff's still not there. Cincinnati, a little disappointing right now, sitting at 7 and 9. They need to get their stuff together. You can't be dropping series to the Tigers if you're supposed to be a World Series sleeper in this short of a season. Chicago? I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised, that you guys are 10-3 and three right now. Uh, the offense is there. It's just everyone's been talking about rebuilding, of course. We saw Hamels left. Um, you Darvish isn't great anymore. So the team's just kind of was supposed to be in a rebuild. It wouldn't have shocked me if they were sitting at 7-9 and nine right now. I think they are playing over their heads, though. I think the NL Central is one of the weakest in baseball this season. Um, we'll see. Milwaukee mentioned uh, Pittsburgh. Poof. You guys are doing rebuilding right. You guys are tanking correctly. I applaud you for that. With the pace that you're playing at, you're getting that first pick, no questions asked. Now we're on to the AL East, and the New York Yankees are at first at 10 and 6. 
Tampa Bay, 8-8, eight and eight. Baltimore, 7-7, seven and seven. Boston, 6-9, Toronto, 5-8. and eight. Yankees, no surprise you're in first place. Dominant team. You know, dropping 2-4 of four to the Phillies doesn't help you, but Aaron Judge is dominating. Giancarlo Stanton put on the DL, IL, again. You know, I'm very concerned about that contract if I'm a Yankees fan. Uh, Garrett Coles looked okay, but again, he's on a big contract too. So the Yankees really need these guys to stay healthy and start producing. Because right now, Aaron Judge is the best player on that group. Gary Sanchez has been struggling immensely as well. So the Yankees are 10-6 and 6 with struggles from Stanton, you know, now that he's hurt, and Gary Sanchez. So just imagine if those two guys come back and are 100% soon. Uh, Tampa Bay 8-8, eight and eight, I'm not surprised. You know, Tampa Bay could be a little better. But, you know, playing the Yankees will hurt you. Baltimore 7-7 seven and seven again. Baltimore, now they're starting to show their true colors. They're starting to slow down a bit. They're going to fall. They're not going to stay third place in the AL East. They're too, they're not good enough. That pitching staff, including the bullpen, oh my goodness. Uh, Boston, about where I expected them to be. Their offense is looking a little better. Verdugo had a good night a few nights ago. He had two homers. Uh, ben Attendee's finally starting to break out of his slump a little bit. So there, there is that. I mean, Ben Attendee's not the best player right now, but... And Devers is still in a slump for Boston. They need these guys to all produce. Otherwise, they're not in a good position. Toronto, that offense is looking awful right now. They're hitting as a team collectively about, like, I think it was 215 or something. That's what happens when you're so reliant on these young kids, you know, Kevin Biggio, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette. That's the problem. When you're relying on all these kids, they're going to have slumps, and they don't know how to talk themselves out of it. So if one of them starts to struggle, they're all going to struggle. That's the problem. But this is a good season to have those problems. Uh, it's not a full season. So, and Then we go to the NL East, last but not least. Miami Marlins are in first place at 7-3. and three. Atlanta Braves, 11-6. and six. New York Mets, 7-9. and nine. Philadelphia Phillies, 4-6. and six. And Washington Nationals, 4-7. and seven. So let's get the elephant out of the room first. Miami is also playing way over its head. Uh, they were at one point seven and I think it was seven and one before they lost these last two games. Uh, they're, they're just playing over their head. They're not gonna stay at this level. It's not possible. But if you made a prop bet that the Marlins were gonna make the playoffs back in March, you're eight, you know, back in February, March, you're you're gonna you're hoping you're hoping. Um, Atlanta eleven and six. Now, Atlanta, don't be shocked if Atlanta runs away with this division. You know, the Marlins are going to start to struggle soon. The Braves' offense has looked really good recently. Unfortunately, I watched two of their games yesterday where they slaughtered my Phillies in both. And, of course, when the Phillies won the first game, I couldn't watch it. But, um, you know, the Braves' offense is the Braves' offense. We know what they are. Acuna has finally snapped out of his early season slump as well. Again, the Braves wish he had done it earlier. Freddie Freeman's doing Freddie Freeman things, you know, old reliable at this point. Mets, listen, losing Syndergaard before the season started really hurt you. You know, he needed Tommy John. Uh, that pitching staff, other than DeGrom, isn't that great. And Pete Alonzo, I haven't heard much about him. So, uh, Phillies, 4-6. and six. Look, the bullpen needs help. The pitching staff needs help. Wheeler's looked good. Nola's looked good. Uh, Velasquez needs to go at least to the bullpen, and they need to get some bullpen pieces, but I'm not going to go on a Phillies rant today. Don't worry. Last but not least, Nationals. Um, disappointing wouldn't even be the right word for them. This is the defending World Series champions, and they're sitting at 4-7 and seven in a division that's not even that strong in the NL East. Now, yeah, don't get me wrong. Atlanta is definitely a title contender this year, but the Nationals should not be 4-7. and seven. That's just not acceptable. Um, the offense is mostly still there from the World Series team. The pitching staff is all still there. You know, you lost Rendon, and I get that. That's a big piece. But the thing is, you just caught up one of your top par prospects in Carter Keeblem. So it's not like you lost your best player and didn't have anyone to replace him. So it's a little concerning if I'm a Nationals fan, which I'm not. But um, Washington, you know, that pitching staff is still there. Don't get me wrong. That pitching staff is still there. You still got Corbin, Scherzer, and uh, Strasburg, of course. But the bench isn't there anymore. 
you know, you lost Mr. National Zimmerman. He he's taking the year off. Don't be shocked if he's done for his career at this point. But yeah, um, so of course that is the current standings. And remember, with how the current baseball season is going to be for 2020, the top two teams from each division will make the playoffs. I'll start just to, I'll start discussing that in a couple weeks. I don't. It's too early to do that. So yeah, um, Oakland. You know, right now. I would say the World Series favorites would be New York Yankees, of course. Minnesota Twins, still, even the Cubbies and the Dodgers. Atlanta, and if I have to go with an AOS team, of course, Houston. Sorry, um, Oakland. Houston, I think they're going to rebound. But, yeah, Uh, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a good one. This was week three.